The problem with being introduced as a big star uh, is when you come out and everyone's like, well, I don't know that guy. That's, that's terribly disappointing for everyone. Um, uh, my father's watching on the internet, so I'm going to talk about him. Uh, I hope that's okay with everyone. Uh, I, I, I specifically, I want to talk about my upbringing, uh, my childhood, when uh, I grew up in a really like masculine environment because uh, my brother and I were raised by my dad uh, because my parents got divorced when I was six months old. That was my fault, not a big deal. But, uh, <laughs> but like a real masculine, like no crying, firm rule, like not, never even stated, just implied, just because I never, uh, like my dad wasn't like, be a man, don't cry. It wasn't any sort of macho thing. I just, I never saw him cry. I never saw my brother cry. If you spend your whole life not exposed to something, I'll tell you this, the first time you encounter it, it will freak you out. I remember the first time I made a girlfriend of mine cry, I had no idea what to do. I didn't know what to say. I just, I said what my dad would say to me. I was like, you better cut that out before I give you something to cry about. And that's not gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna help the situation. It was like tough guy environment, man, because my dad was tough, my brother was tough, and uh, so I always like felt that I was tough, as you can tell by my cardigan. And uh, but I think it's weird. I think when you're little, you always think your dad's the biggest, toughest guy in the world. He's like he's like a superhero when you're a kid. He's just like you remember you try to fight your dad and stuff when you're little. You try and push him over and you can't. He's like, eh, gotta eat a few more burgers yet. And you're like, oh my god, you're like Colossus from the X-Men. Uh, but then you grow up to be an adult and you realize he's only five eight and you can take him. So. Watch yourself, Dad. Uh, but my, uh, my brother was tough, and he, like, he played hockey. He had a speed bag in the basement. And, uh, so I was, wanted to, like, I was always real competitive with my brother. I wanted to be tough like him and stuff. And uh, I was especially competitive because when I was three, my brother put me in the dryer. And uh, yeah, like for real, put me in, closed the door, was clamoring up on top to press the button. My grandma snatched him up. That stays with you. I will tell you that. That is, like, that is a formative experience that guides your life. Like Even to this day, I'm afraid of tight, dark spaces and the smell of bounce. I'm telling you. Like, like, if I was dying, like, if I died drowning, that would be the best. My first thought would be, oh, my God, this death is so roomy. Oh, my God, this is great. I can splash around down here. Uh, but so I was always competitive with my brother, but, uh, but he was always, like, uh, he's older than me, so he's bigger and tougher, stronger. He's always better at sports, all the things that mattered. And uh, I, would, I was, uh, so I thought what I would do was the way I would beat him, I would read a whole bunch of books he hadn't read, and then I would be smarter than him. Like, that's how I would beat him. Uh, so I tried to read the encyclopedia. Uh, does that... Sorry, is anybody, you know, you know what I mean, the encyclopedia? Does that mean anything to any, it's like a 90s version of the internet, you know what I mean? But it's shit, all the links are manual, it's terrible. It's, you gotta, like you flip through, it's like, oh, look, page 198 of volume G. You have to get volume G and then flip it, it's terrible. It's like, choose your own adventure book, it's bullshit. Uh, do you guys know books? Is that something that means anything to you? Is that, no? It's like Gutenberg's version of the iPad, it's old school. Uh, so... Anyway, I was real, uh, I, I tried to read the encyclopedia. I couldn't. So boring. Oh, my God. Encyclopedia is so boring. It's just a list of facts. Uh, so I could really, I only read the A volume, uh, which meant that I always had to, like, try to pepper my conversation with my brother with references to things that I had learned about, like aerodynamics or algorithms or apples or whatever. Uh, so I'd just try and shoehorn into the conversation. Like, I would say to my brother, like, oh, I bet you can't even tell me Aristotle's theory of universals. And then he would push me down the stairs. Uh, <laughs> And then from the top of the stairs, he would yell out the correct answer, which is stop being such a loser. So, so it was always learning for me, which was great. Uh, but I was like, I got all like smug about like, I learned all these facts and stuff. I got arrogant about it. And like, I was trying like get the last word in, like, cause that's like what you do when you're arrogant. So like, if I needed a timeout or whatever, like even if it wasn't appropriate, my brother's putting me in a car trunk and I just like, he'd be like, hey, you can probably breathe in there for 30 minutes. I'd be like, your math is incorrect. Uh, I had read about asphyxiation. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, like, but I got, like, so, like, smug about it, so, like, arrogant, such a weird, like, of, of, of facts? Who cares about facts? You can't impress, girls don't care about facts. You can't impress a girl with facts. I've spent my entire life trying to meet a girl who's had a sick aardvark. And I'm just like, what, what are you feeding it, pine nuts? That's your problem. They don't care. <laughs> girls never care. Uh, so, I, but I would get all like smug and arrogant because I learned a bunch of facts. And uh, well, here's a true fact, actually. Uh, if you brag about how often you win at Trivial Pursuit, you're gonna get punched in the face. That's a true fact that I learned in real life. Uh, it's how I got punched in the face. Uh, I was at a I was at a party in high school and. Um, uh, I just leaned in. A bunch of guys were talking. I said some smug, arrogant thing to this guy. Uh, was, and actually, I wasn't even with them. I wasn't even part of their car. I was just leaning in like a loser, just <laughs> hoping other people at the party thought I wasn't there alone. And, uh, and this guy says something, he's, he's talking, he's like, oh man, I met this hottest Brazilian girl, man, she's from Buenos Aires, I gotta go down there. And I was like, uh, actually, fellows, uh, Buenos Aires is in Argentina. Starts with A. And, uh, 
And so he was like, oh, cool. I didn't know that. Thanks, man. So then I said, yeah, that's why I got the high score in Sega Jeopardy, bitch. Boom. Punch me in the face. Uh, if you've never been punched in the face before, I will tell you this. Uh, you immediately re-examine assumptions you've made about yourself. He hit me, and I was like, oh, God, I'm not tough. I was like, I don't know how to fight somebody. I was like, I hope this guy wants to settle this with a game of Risk. I could do that. Uh, and he hit me so hard, my head went right up to the ceiling. And when it came back down, he was gone. And I was like, did I disappear him with my mind? Uh, which I didn't. Uh, what happened, my brother was at the same party. My brother had grabbed him and thrown him across the room. So I run over there like I'm going to do something, right? And my brother's just standing there. He's holding, my brother's a very big guy. My brother's just holding this guy by his throat against the wall. And he turns to me and he's like, is that what Aristotle would have done? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I fought my brother. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, five, six weeks ago uh, at my niece's sixth birthday party. And uh, that's how it had to go down. That's how it goes. Uh, he had rented, uh, like, an inflatable, uh, like, castle for, like, the kids to bounce around in, you know, the thing. Um, but he also rented these huge, like, oversized novelty boxing gloves, which are obviously not for the kids because they're bigger than a six-year-old. They can't even lift them. It's just clearly so all the dads can get hammered, get in the castle, pound the crap out of each other, right? So... We're in there. It's the best. And, uh, and my brother and I, uh, we're, we're in the cage. And, uh, well, I call it the cage because it's like the UFC, but bouncy. And, um, <laughs> and we're in there. And, and this is serious. Like, this was a planned event. My brother's been training for the fight. And not like shadow boxing the day before or like looking in the mirror and saying inspirational quotes from Rocky or whatever. Uh, he lost 35 pounds training for the fight in the bouncy castle. And like and like, see, like I like training for months and like he's lifting weights and stuff. I was doing like cardio and playing basketball and stuff. And uh, and so we're we're getting into it and uh, and we're fighting. And in the third round, uh, there wasn't really rounds, but in my mind there was because it's on TSN and everything. It's just somebody's iPhone probably, but it's gonna be huge on YouTube. And uh, my brother has to take a knee and he's like, Oh my God, you're killing me with the stamina, man. I can't like uh, I can't last you, man. The the cardio, it's killing me. And then I think for the first time in my life, I'm gonna win. Oh my God, this is going to be the best. My brother's been beating up my entire life and now he has a heart condition. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the greatest. And uh, so he thinks, he realizes he can't outlast me. So he's got to get up and he's just throwing as hard as he can. Like I, uh, like only now can like fully move my head like left to right. For like four weeks, I'm like talking like Robocop. If I got to address somebody on either side, I got to turn my whole torso. And uh, so he gets, he's throwing as hard as he can. And I'm like floating like a butterfly and I'm ducking and weaving and whatever. And, uh, and we both think we're five seconds away uh, for winning for about 20 minutes. Right, which is so long. If you've ever played Nintendo Wii, like Mike Tyson boxing, it is exhausting after like 80 seconds. You're like, oh my God, let somebody else play. And, uh, and so he thinks he's going to knock me out, and I think he's going to die. So <laughs> we're both just trying to take advantage of the moment. And, uh, but eventually, uh, he's, he's, like, he's laid out. I see it. It's in his eyes. He can't say mercy, but he's like, he knows he's lying. He can't, he can't get up, and he's just he's laying there bent and broken. My big brother's been beating me up my whole life, and I was like, Aristotle was a pacifist. That's what Muhammad Ali would have done. And, and that's when I realized how many things start with A. It's so many. So many. And uh, we're sitting there at the, the table afterwards eating birthday cake, and my brother's sitting there, and he's like, this is hard for me to accept. My dad's there, and uh, my brother's like, it's hard for me to accept, but... Like, you beat me in that fight. And I just looked at my dad, and I was like, you hear this shit? You hear this? I beat him. First time ever. And I'm like, I, by the way, I'm 35, so I should probably, like, be able to deal with this with a little more emotional maturity. But I was like, did you hear that? And he's like, eh, I think he won on points. I was like, you bastard. Are you serious? What a prick. I couldn't believe you won't give me this? Just a little bit of pride? You fuck. Oh, man, it kills me. I was like, oh, here's a quick impression, by the way. Uh, here's my father expressing pride. Watch for this. It's subtle. Yep. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, that's just like a hug. Oh, my God. It's, it's like guessing the emotions of an animal my entire life. Just, what, what, are you happy? Are you ha my whole life would have been easier if my dad had a tail. That's what I'm saying. But... Uh, my, dad, my dad did... He caught me having sex once. Uh, and, uh, yeah, is that, was that happened to you? No? Yes? Oh, sweet. Who caught you, your father or your mother? Congratulations. Oh, everyone feels for you immediately. It's a... <laughs>
and then you got on top again? Is that what you said? Congratulations for just your go get it attitude. That's the talk, the talk. Okay, well, I hope it took. Uh, uh, I got caught because I had, um, uh, I used to go visit my grandmother every summer uh, for a month. And so I'd gone away for a month. Uh, and actually, I, I used to always visit my, I never think of my grandmother as like an important woman in my life, but I probably, I spent a lot of time with her. And, uh, but I just never think of her as a, like a woman. She's uh, 96 years old. Like, but, uh, I never really connected it to the, like the, the advice she was giving me to the women I was talking to, the girls I was talking to. Because uh, what am I going to learn from my grandma about girls? Uh, here's what I know. Girls like scones. Is that true? I don't think so. But <laughs> So... I got away for a month, so I, I, I come home. I want to get reacquainted with my girlfriend, right? So we are in the basement getting reacquainted, and uh, that's not how I get reacquainted. That's not, <laughs> that's not my move or anything. No, <laughs> like, mm, you're tickling me. I know. Um, and my dad comes home, and usually my dad would take his keys out at the front door and throw them down, right? And I would hear it, and I'd be like, oh, cool, I got two minutes. Uh, and then he would go upstairs, change out of his work clothes, and come downstairs, hi, say hi. But I've been out of town for a while, so my dad's all excited that I'm home. Uh, so he comes home, he throws down his keys, and I was like, I got two minutes. And then he hits the basement stairs, and I was like, I have zero minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Eight stairs does not take very long if you were at the bottom naked. I will tell you that. That's a fact. Time slows down. Your whole perception of it, I was like, where are my pants? <laughs> We managed to pull a blanket up, and uh, my father walks into the room and then takes way too long to realize what's going on. <laughs> he just starts a conversation with us, and he's just going, oh, hey, how was the flight? Everything was good? And I'm like, because <laughs> that's the only sentence I can compose at the time. And, uh, and he's like, hey, everything's good with your Uncle Rex? You see your Uncle Rex? And I don't know what, he th we managed to pull off the illusion that uh, we're watching TV with our shirts off. And, uh, and, but I don't, like, I don't understand, like, he's going on so long, like two and a half, three minutes, which is not very long, unless your father's in the room and you're naked with a heart on. Oh my God, then it's so long. It's, it goes forever. And, uh, but I get the sense of what I see when it registers on his face, when he realizes what's happened. Because he, I get to see, because he's like, hey, did you do that thing with your grandma that I Yep. <laughs> it's the greatest moment of my life, everybody. Thank you.